Hello, once again, and welcome to another edition of Times Past. My name is Ed Josephs, and uh, we're very pleased and honored this evening to have uh, as our guest, Mr. Harold Boothroyd uh, of Wenham, ex-Beverlyite, uh, who was with us, and we're going to talk about a gentleman by the name of Benjamin Conant, fellow who was born 149 years ago in the town of Wenham, and who, as he grew older and uh, passed into his later life, was able to uh, take pictures, some, oh, five or six or more thousand pictures of life as it was a hundred years ago, beginning back in 1890, uh, over in Wenham, North Beverly area, over into Hamilton, and uh, he, he really has given us a wonderful record of the way life was in our local community here just a century ago. Benjamin Conant. Harold, nice to have you with us again on Times Past. Uh, you were with us earlier when we did a World War II production down at the Beverly Historical Society. Right <laughs> nice, to, nice to have you back again. Uh, you are, as I said, a Beverly native, having uh, graduated from Beverly High School in 1941. Correct. And uh, then went into the uh, service uh, in the Navy. And uh, after World War II, uh, what did you do then? Well, I went back and finished college after, after World War II, and then I went out and got myself a job. So uh, uh, I got married uh, in 1948, and I built my own home with uh, the help of my wife and, and brother and father. Uh -huh. So you are now residing in Wenham, and uh, thus your interest, I, I would assume, in Wenham's history and the surrounding environs. I know you do an awful, awfully lot with the Beverly Historical Society, as well as being the curator of the Benjamin Conant collection of pictures at the Wenham Historical Society and, and Museum. Correct. So, uh, as I say, <coughs> Benjamin Conant is our subject, and we're going to take uh, our viewers on a trip uh, starting uh, in, in Beverly, downtown Beverly, and uh, through North Beverly and up into Wenham and Hamilton and. Goodness knows where we'll be headed, Harold, as these programs unfold. This is the first of a, of a series of programs that we hope to do here uh, in the studios of Channel 6 here on Toja Road. And this program that we're going to uh, uh, show you tonight will be shown on both Channel 6 and Channel 11 as it pertains to Beverly history. And as we get into the series a little bit more, Harold, we'll stick uh, with Channel 11, which is the Wenham and Hamilton history, history side of what Mr. Conant preserved for us. So I think maybe we could start by uh, having you tell us a little bit about uh, some photography information that you have brought okay. along with you. All right. Uh, I think uh, just to orient most of the people as to what photography is uh, like where it started and and uh, how it ended up uh, with Benny Conant uh, doing his photographs, uh, glass plate photographs in Wenham. Uh, the first uh, successful photographs were called daguerreotypes, and uh, these were done on <coughs> a silver-plated uh, copper sheet. And you, you expose, expose this to the light, and after 20 minutes exposure, uh, you didn't see any change at all on, on, on the image, on the polished image, until they uh, heated some mercury, and the mercury vapor uh, changed the chemical action and, and caused uh, a silvery image. Uh, as shown in, in, in this uh -huh. daguerreotype here. Uh -huh. And they, they were usually kept in cases uh, for, for protection and under glass. Uh, very complicated procedure. Uh, it was very complicated and uh, it didn't last very long because the photographers that were uh, uh, heating up this mercury vapor got mercury poisoning, it got into their lungs, and, and that did away with a lot of the, the earlier photographers. Mm. Mm. The, uh, the, the second phase of photography was called uh, ambrotypes, and this was a wet plate, uh, uh, it was a 
wet collodion, they call it, plate. And they had to, uh, before the, 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 the mixture dried on glass, they had to put it in the camera and, and uh, take uh, the picture. Uh -huh. the, um, the, one of the uh, examples of that is, is this small one here, and uh, it's characteristic. It's a basic negative, and by putting the negative on a black background, it changes it to look like a positive. Uh -huh. So it's negative and positive <laughs> in one. Uh, Th these are your typical Civil War kind of uh, <clears throat> that's pictures correct. That, we, yeah. that we have preserved. And uh, in in 18, uh, this was 1854, and eight, in the early 1850s, this, this uh, wet process uh, allowed them also to make what they call tintypes or ferrotypes. And uh, I think everybody has heard of tintypes. And these were done on, on, on a uh, iron or steel, I guess it was an iron plate, uh, steel wasn't probably around then, and uh, this was also uh, a process which uh, uh, there were an awful lot of these, uh, f you know, with family pictures. Uh -huh. Now, <clears throat> all these three types, uh, early types, were really negatives. They weren't prints from a negative, and uh, the first, uh, the first subjects of making a glass negative, per se, and then uh, making a positive print from that uh, appeared in the, the wet collodion plate period and, and the dry plate period. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> the dry plate period is, is basically what Benjamin Conant used uh, in his photographing of, in starting at 1890. And his four by five boxes, his sensitized uh, f film, which was no more than a sensitized uh, silver salt on, on, on a piece of glass, uh -huh. uh, came in these boxes, uh, and and they could be carried around, and <clears throat> you couldn't expose them to light uh, until they were in the camera, uh -huh. and you put them in the camera, and then. Then you, you you slid the little uh, uh, I guess it's like a a, a sheet of uh, wooden away, and then uh, it would capture what comes through the lens. <clears throat> Did people have to sit for a long time to get a picture taken back in those days? Well, uh, th they say twenty minutes was was uh, normal for a daguerreotype, Whoa. and and it progressively got. Uh, 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 reduced, the, the time was reduced. Now, they interjected a lens uh, in, in the camera. Uh, I have a good example here of the, what the basics of a camera is, and it, it shows in the book here that visualizing this box as a camera, and there's a tiny pinhole in it, and what happens, it, as light comes through, it, it changes the image uh, from right side up to upside down. Mm -hmm. Well, this is basically what all the uh, daguerreotypes, uh, tin types, and ambrotypes uh, were done with. Uh -huh. uh, and because th they were negatives in themselves made to look like positives. Uh -huh. And I think you're, if you ever, uh, thought about this, you'll find that these three types never had any printing uh, because the printing would be backwards. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, well, now how did, when Kona, Mr. Kona took his pictures, what, what did he do with them at that oh, point in time? Now, now I am not sure at all whether, uh, whether or not he had a uh, uh, dark room and did his own work. I, I got a feeling he had friends that did do the processing for him because he was acquainted with uh, Beverly photographers. Yeah. And uh, 
uh, there's no evidence that shows that, that he has done it, but he may have had a dark room right in his house. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's that's fascinating. We could do a whole section right, right, just with that photography book that you have there yeah. in front of well, you. Well, this is just scratching the surface and getting us up to uh, Conant's type of plates he was using. And yeah. and they say right on it, they say the uh, standard uh, extremely rapid dry plate. Uh -huh. See, so so the rapidity was uh, as they made the emulsion on the glass more sensitive to light. Yeah. Uh, this speeded up the whole process. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's have a look at the man himself now, shall okay. we? Okay. Uh, we have here our first picture of, of uh, Mr. Conant. It was taken in May of 1890, and he's 47 years old mm -hmm. here, Harold. If you wish to make any comments on these as we go along, please do so. Um, uh, he's well along in his uh, life here. He's uh, in his 40s at this point, I believe, in, in, in uh, terms of age. And he really did not start his uh, photography work until he became a, an older man. That's right. That's, that's what um, makes these typical of what he looked like at the time that he was doing his photographing. Yep. The earlier uh, pictures of him uh, depict him as a boy. Yeah. yeah. We'll show those in yeah. just a minute. Okay. Uh, a, a brief uh, a biographical sketch here. Born in 1843 and he lived until 1921. So he lived, Correct. He lived a pretty good age and he was a uh, Wenham's first first librarian uh, in the town of Wenham, mm -hmm. according to my notes. Uh, he went off to the Civil War. He uh, enlisted and re-enlisted again uh, uh, and stayed pretty much for the duration of the war as a soldier. We're going to see his picture here in just a minute uh, as a Civil War vet. Uh, he was a historian, for sure, and uh, an organist at the First Church of Wenham, Correct. right across yeah. the street from where yeah. you hold sway at the museum. And uh, he was the custodian of the town clock, and I found that rather amusing. Mm -hmm. that, uh, they, mm -hmm. they thought so much of the clock in those days to have someone look after it personally and oh, give oh, him a title oh, like that. It, it needed to be wound uh -huh. once a week, yeah. so uh, this was something that somebody had to be the custodian. We still have a custodian today. Fellow by the name of Clark. Uh, yeah, down there. Very, yeah. Very, true. very nice, nice <clears throat> man. And, of course, uh, what we remember him for, and we're forever in, into his debt as a photographer, and his career spanned the years of 1890 through up until the time of his death in 1921. How many pictures, Harold, would you say, ballpark figure, would you oh, say? I, I think they're uh, around uh, 3,600, uh, and there may be a plus on that. Yeah. Because some of which are still working on down there at the... Oh, are there all, th all 3,600 we have. Uh -huh. uh, there are missing ones, uh -huh. uh, but uh, that's something that nobody knows anything about, yeah. why they're missing, uh, why they didn't get into the museum, into the collection. Right. Who knows? Uh, we'll let that one go for a minute. Here he is now as a young boy. This is the picture you were alluding to mm -hmm. a minute ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'd be, what, 12 years old here, this he, photograph? He, n I th I don't know what that one is. So I'm, uh, yeah, a young young boy. Yeah, young boy. Eighteen fifty-five. It's hard to tell. Yeah, yeah. He, twelve, 12 years, years old. Twelve. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. And uh, that was uh, of course this goes back to the very earliest stages of photography. Yeah. Right, right here. Yeah, he, he, you can see it's in one of these uh, fancy cases, like uh, you know, yep. shown here. Yep. Uh, here's here's one of the the trims that. Most of these cases uh, uh, have a brass uh, pressed uh, fancy uh, yeah. frame. Yeah. Now, we see him here as a Civil War soldier, Harold. Yeah. This is, of course, of the 1860s. Yeah. And yeah. He, he looks like a, a rather business like fellow there, does he? Not? Yeah, he's, he's I, I don't think he looks too happy, not, but. Not uh, happy at all. May, maybe uh, that goes with going off to the war. Yeah, he went down to Baltimore, I, I read in the notes, and mm -hmm. uh, served a hitch and came back and re enlisted and uh, went back again uh, for the second time, which was. Uh, quite admirable, admirable on his part, mm -hmm. and uh, this is at the age of 21. We see him here in his Civil War uh, getup. Now, one of my favorite pictures of him, uh, he's 54 years old here, and we see him on his bicycle, mm -hmm. which was a popular way to get around town in those days. That's correct. And uh, uh, this was uh, during the time of his uh, picture-taking uh, career, time of his life, so obviously someone here took this for him, and. Uh, 
uh, were... He had, he had a, uh, a girl who was interested in photography, and uh, she lived on uh, Cherry Street, and uh, sometimes